Welcome to HortTube. My name is Jim Putnam. In this video, I'm going to be uh, doing an interview with uh, Denny Werner. Uh, Denny has introduced uh, lots of plants that I've shown uh, on the channel over the, uh, over the last few years, including some beautiful red buds that we're gonna talk, probably talk about in this video. This is a series of videos I'm doing with horticulturalists talking about their favorite plants. Uh, Denny, can you tell me something about yourself? Sure. Uh, thanks, Jim, for coming out this morning. I appreciate it. I, uh, I've been in NC State for 40 years. I retired a few years ago. I'm originally from southern Pennsylvania. Did a lot of gardening in my youth. And my hobby became my job, and my job is my hobby. So it's all been good. Uh, always enjoy when Jim comes out here to uh, have a look at the garden. Uh, i am uh, been a breeder of Budlia for many years. I uh, released quite a few Budlia, the Lo and Behold series and the Mist series. And also now more recently, I've worked with red buds and have bred quite a few of those. So I'm ready to walk around the garden. Okay, okay. all right. Uh, so well, one thing we were talking about before we get started on, uh, and I think this will be the case with pretty much everybody I interview, <clears throat> those of us who have been in horticulture for a long time, when you ask us our favorite plants, it's a difficult thing, yeah. right? Very difficult. Yeah. So right. Do a lot of head scratching when someone asks me what my favorite plant is. R right. Yeah. It's, it's a function of time yeah. and place as to what a favorite plant is. But right. I got some good ones out here this morning, hopefully, that uh, will be okay. in my top tier at least. Okay. So this is the second one of these videos I'll be putting up. The first one was with, was with Buddy Lee down on the Gulf Coast, <laughs> and he picked the same plant that's your first plant. Huh, interesting. Right here. Okay. So yeah. tell us about... Yeah. Very good. Uh, yeah, this is a Cyrilla. This is a plant that's really not too widely known. It's not found in the trade to any large extent. It doesn't look good in a pot. It right. doesn't flower during the spring garden center season. Uh, I got my plant from a specialty nursery in the southeast, oh, probably 25 years ago. Uh, it's a U.S. native. Uh, Cyrilla racemiflora is the genus and species. Common name for this is Tai Tai or Leatherwood. It grows here in North Carolina. In fact, we find it right here in White County, uh, larger populations down in the southeast part of the state. And what I love about this is uh, semi-evergreen foliage uh, and these beautiful racemose uh, inflorescences. And what is special about this plant, uh, it typically flowers uh, for me here in Zone 7 Raleigh, late June, early July. This plant is a remarkable pollinator magnet. Uh, during the heat of the day when this plant's in full bloom, and we're probably about five to seven days away from full flower here, uh, it attracts a, an incredible diversity of pollinators. I can stand under this, this plant uh, during the heat of the day and it's like you're underneath a buzzsaw. Right. There's so much pollinator activity. Wow. I had a, uh, had a colleague in the entomology department some years ago who came out uh, with me when this plant was in full flower and he did a sweep with his net and he keyed out 22 different species of pollinators on that plant just in one quick 10 minute ID. Uh, so it's, uh, it's a great plant for that purpose. It's, uh, it, I've pruned mine up to uh, a, tree three tru a three uh -huh. trunk tree form. Right. It does tend to, in its youth, it tends to sucker quite a bit. So I've tried to keep the suckers down so I could develop it into the tree form. Right. This one started out as a court plant about 25, maybe right. even 30 years ago. So this is an old, old specimen. Yeah. Gotcha. So we're, we're, we're now 20 feet tall and 18, 20 feet wide. Exactly. Something like that. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Pretty carefree, uh, does well in wetlands in its native habitat, doing well here in, in normal garden soils. Uh, just one of my uh, favorite obscure plants, I guess, might be the best way to put it. Okay. Oh. So we can't do uh, Denny's uh, favorite uh, plants without uh, covering Cersus, for sure. Can you tell us about your latest, yeah, your sure latest can. introduction? Yes, I've always had an interest in Cersus. I've been breeding red buds for about 20 years at NC State. This is our latest introduction. This is Flamethrower, it's a trademarked name. And uh, this was released about four years ago. Uh, it's uh, an example of a, of a redbud tree that's expressing both the purple leaf gene and the gold leaf gene in the same genetic background. Right. So uh, the way this tree behaves is that as it emerges, as the foliage emerges in the spring, you have some beautiful red tones on that new growth. 
And then as the tree develops, you get a mixture of reds and purples and golds, lime greens, and then finally greens. So right. you can see this variation in color that's expressed at the same time during the growing season. Uh, it's really quite stunning. Uh, we're very proud of uh, this particular release. Uh, it uh, has typical purple flowers in the spring. Uh, the uh, claim to fame is this, uh, this expression of multiple colors uh, on the foliage at the same time. Right. Do you think this is something we will see in other, in other genus, in other, in other species of plants? Yeah. Like I, in, I, in the future, will we see this? Yeah, I, I think actually we already see that um, purple. So we'll yeah. see that. You think we'll see this more? I, I more. think we'll see this more uh -huh. frequently, and I'm sure you'll see more red buds that are like this right. in the future. <laughs> right. Yeah. Knowing, sure. knowing the horticultural trade, yeah, right. they'll, yeah, they'll, yeah, yeah, yeah. there'll be some other ones coming down the pike not too long. Right. Yeah. Okay. I'm yeah. sure. So let's go take a look at a couple of uh, the other. Yeah. Red buds. Sure. Yeah. This is the one that's in many, many background photos and video uh, on my channel. This is uh, Golden Falls. This is another one of Denny's uh, introductions here. Yeah, Golden Falls uh, is, a, uh, uh, is a cross between the old variety Lavender Twist uh -huh. and Hearts of Gold, mm -hmm. uh, which was actually the first gold leaf variety that was ever released into the trade. Uh, our goal, of course, in this, uh, with that cross was to develop a weeping gold leaf form. Uh, I thought of it more as a companion to Ruby Falls, our purple leaf variety that we released uh, some years ago. Uh, this, uh, this was selected for attractive gold foliage and uh, we, as we were selecting the best individual out of our seedling populations, we were looking uh, for scorch resistance. Right. A, lot, a big problem with a lot of the gold leaf forms is they, they bleach out in the full sun. So that's, we, we selected for that trait and uh, as it turns out, this uh, weeping form has a very abrupt weeping character. It's it very narrow. It's almost a columnar weeping, if you will, uh, which is an interesting, interesting trait. As you can see, as the season progresses, as we get into the heat of the summer and as the new growth begins to slow down, we get a transition from the gold to more of the uh, gold green character, and then likely uh, it'll be uh, fully green by late August into September. But uh, Right. A nice companion to Ruby Falls. The Ruby Falls and uh, Golden Falls look real good together uh, in a landscape setting. Right. I'm amazed how dense the growth is <clears throat> on this plant. I mean, most weeping plants like this, you can kind of see right through them. This thing, mm -hmm. mine is exact, exactly the same mm -hmm. as this. And this is in the middle of this landscape. I mean, we, we couldn't get any more sun on this, and uh, it really hasn't burned. Yeah, this is full sun from yeah. morning uh, right. till night. It is very well branched. It behaves very well in the nursery. Nurserymen uh, talk about how well branched it is in a nursery setting right. and just how vigorous it is. They can grow it up to the top of a seven foot stake uh, in Tennessee in one year and then it's going to weep down about four or five right. feet. So it's probably putting on about 10 feet a year in that first nursery. Next up is a Ruby Falls uh, red bud. Uh, how long has this one been? Ruby out. Falls was released about 2008, 2009, if yeah. I recall. Uh, it was one of my first releases. Right, I got you. Yeah. And uh, as you can see, it's a uh, weeping purple leaf form. Uh, this was a cross between Lavender Twist and the old purple leaf form, Forest Pansy. Pa Forest Pansy, Which yeah. is released back in the 1940s. Right. Uh, oh, is that, is that that old? Yeah, it was found in the late it was 1940s. Really? really? Yeah. I mean, I can see the foliage is very similar, not just purple, but mm -hmm. also the way in which it fades yeah. toward mm -hmm. green. It's like right. far as pansy. Yeah. It's yeah. Got, yeah. And our, our goal when we uh, made that cross was to uh, determine if we could develop a weeping purple leaf form, and we were successful. It's a very strong growing tree. Uh, it has uh, has thicker leaves than a lot of other canadensis red buds. Growers sometimes ask me if it has some texensis in its background, oh. which it does not. Right. Uh, but it's, uh, it's uh, done very well in the trade, widely grown. Sales yeah. are really good on this tree. They're still strong after what, about 12 years now. Right. So I'm really proud of that one. I, this is one I see a lot when I drive around the country. Right. Yeah, I right. see it in people's front yards. Yeah, or it I must go, make you pretty proud. Yeah, I'm pretty this proud is... of that. I see it in the garden centers. I go to, right. to Denver, Colorado, and I go right. to a garden center, and right. there it is. So it's for, been a really good tree. And for us, I'm a, I want a two-tenths of an acre lot. 
and mm -hmm. so that golden falls red bud you know the ruby yeah. falls red mm -hmm. bud this is if you're if i'm trying to get an ornamental tree that's you know, a good that's a, a good point yeah, yeah it's a perfect tree or or on the edge of a foundation mm -hmm. something where you need something tall and narrow yeah. uh, th these are good choices so the last of the red buds uh, we'll talk about is uh, white water okay yeah white water was released at, at about the same time as ruby falls one of my early releases uh, I have good memories of this one because I made the cross in the J.C. Ralston Arboretum back in 1998, I think. Uh -huh. So it was one of my very first crosses that was made. Uh, this, uh, as you can see, is a uh, weeping variegated leaf form. The variegated parent was uh, the old silver cloud variety, if any of you are familiar with that. Uh, just a nice, graceful habit. You can see, relative to Golden Falls, which has a very abrupt weeping character, right. this one's a little bit more spreading and open in its behavior, uh, which I like. Uh, it's uh, flowers uh, as typical of, of a red bud with nice purple flowers in the spring. The, 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 uh, the leaves will sometimes scorch in real hot, bright summers. Right. Uh, it's in a relatively exposed location here, and we get a little bit of burning, but... Uh, not to, to the extent where it becomes disfiguring. Right, it's a, it's a beautiful plant and it comes out with the kind of reddish <laughs> new yes. foliage and then it yeah. evolves into a bright white and then and as the leaves age, uh, loses some of that variegation. Yeah. So it looks like it's like multiple plants yeah. uh, all in one. The variegation is interesting. It varies from year to year. Some years you get ex uh, considerable expression of the variegated trait. Mm -hmm. Other years, not so much. I think it has a lot to do with temperature during the early emergence of the, of the foliage. Right. I've never quite figured that out, but it varies from year to year. You say crinum or crinum? I say crinum, but maybe I'm wrong. Yeah, it the could same, be crinum. I've, said, I've with, always said crinum, and then, yeah. I hear, then I hear something, and then, you know, and then, uh, then I, uh, who knows. Okay, all right. So uh, next up on the list, you have quite a collection. Out of all the perennials in these, in these borders, the one thing that really stands out. One of the things that really stands out for me are the uh, crinum or crinum lilies. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah, I really enjoy the crinums. Uh, being from Pennsylvania, I never was familiar with them before I moved to the south because most of them are not cold hardy right. up in Pennsylvania. But they're great, great summer bulbs, uh, known for just how rugged they are and uh, how long they live in the landscape. They're, they're said to outlive the person that plants them and the home that they're planted around. Right. They're beautiful. What's uh, this white variety? This variety is called Olean, O-L-L-E-N-E. -E. I think I'm pronouncing it correctly. I may right. not, but that's right. the best I can do. Right. Another great attribute of the crinums is uh, their fragrance and the fact that they are deer resistant. Uh, I've never seen a deer even take a nibble Right. out of a crinum. Very large bulbs. Uh, yeah, which once, is kind of fun in and of itself, yeah, just to have just that, you a, know, just planting that thing. Yeah, you know, that big you old know, softball you put yeah, in the ground. Right, it's right. wonderful. Uh, the, uh, they're tough to divide. They get so well established that I've broken many a shovel trying to divide my crinums. Uh, yeah, right. So once you find the spot for them, probably best just to leave them there if you can. <laughs> right. <laughs> Let's walk around here and look at the larger, sure. yeah. uh, the larger pink one, so you guys can see how really impressive these are. And you can probably find the name of this and weave it in in your editing if you want to. Right. Yeah. I forget. Yeah. Jenks actually told me the name of this one, and I forgot. Yeah. Yeah. So what, what's your source for, 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 for these? Uh, my source for crinums has been uh, largely Tony Avent. Okay, and I got you. And then so, some so plant from Jenks. Plant the Lights and uh -huh. a, a Lush, Leaf, Lush Life Nursery with Jenks Farmer. Oh, okay, with Jenks Farmer. Yeah. yeah. Jenks, yeah. Is, uh, Jenks is the crinum expert, probably yeah. has the best, one of the best collections of crinums. This is, a, as you can see, a, an extraordinarily vigorous cultivar with beautiful, beautiful flower color. Right in full bloom right now. I regret that I forget the name of this one right now, but uh, Jim will fill you in on that a little <laughs> right. bit later right. when he does the editing. Um, yeah, the, and the bees just absolutely go crazy. Yeah, the, the bees love this. Um, uh, just again, a wonderful carefree plant. I can't, right. ha can't say enough good things about it. Is that the same one up in that upper border there or is that a different? That's a different one. So do you know, yeah. okay, let's, look at, let's take yeah. a look at that got, one real it's quick. It's got a mixture of varieties over here. Oh, the goldfinches. He, this, this landscape is full of goldfinches and they elude the camera. Uh, <laughs> constantly elude the camera. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Okay. 
This is, uh, I know the name of this one, if, any, if we can. Uh, what it was, this is called Alan Bozen Quay. Wow. Yeah. Look at it, it's just beautiful. Yeah. This so all is, of this growth just happened in, I mean, what amount, you know? Yeah, they eight emerge. Weeks. Yeah. Eight weeks. Eight weeks, yeah. Yeah, it's They're incredible. They're extremely how much vigorous. Actually grow. What's the, and there's another white one up behind it. Yeah, that's Olene again up okay. there. This is Alan Bozen Quay. Again, I just have a big mess of them here on this embankment. They, they keep the soil stabilized, they uh, provide flowering, good part of the summer. So a big thanks to uh, Denny Warner for letting me uh, come out and uh, bug him this morning about his today's favorite plants. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, it's been a lot of fun, Jim. Thanks for coming out. Uh, appreciate it very much. Uh, this is a, a garden that gives my wife and I lots of pleasure. Coming out in the morning, there's always something different to see, different to look at, new pollinators in the garden. The beauty of gardening is the transition, I think, from day to day that, right. that you get. Uh, just so much to learn. I learn something every day, right. even though I've been in this business forever. I, and I, I agree, and I, I gotta give big thanks to my audience because I've been in this business for 35 years. I started a mm -hmm. garden center in Raleigh, yeah. and really probably I've learned more in the last four years because my audience has given me an opportunity uh -huh, yeah. to come to places like this and see other things outside of my nursery, outside of a garden center, outside of, you know, the thing yes. we kind of get mm -hmm. plugged into. Exactly, very much. It's uh, perhaps akin to my experiences teaching over the years. Right. I've learned so much from my students over the years because of right. the questions that they ask. Yes, yes. It's, uh, yes. So it's, a, it's right. a very similar scenario and it's, uh, it's right. fun. Uh, always wonderful to learn new things from, from other people. Right. Yeah. So thank you guys for uh, watching and following along with the channel. Don't forget to subscribe and hit that little bell notification so you're alerted when I upload a new video. Thanks for watching. Everything working okay? Am I still working yeah. okay <laughs> at, at, at <laughs> okay. 70? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you're working just fine. Okay. okay.